Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today I just got in a brand new Fuel Company 12 inch cast iron pan. So today we're going to unbox it. We're going to compare it to some of our other cast iron. I'm going to give you a really good look at it. And hey, we might even cook on it. So stay tuned. So, uh, the other day I sent an email over to my rep there at uh, at Field Company, let them know that we were uh, doing some reviews on 12 inch pans, specifically the Black Lock. You might have seen some of those. If not, I'll leave you a card uh, right up right atop the screen there. You can go check those out. And uh, so they said, uh, "Hey, sure, man. We'll, we're gonna we're gonna get this right out to you." Uh, so you can check it out. I already have the number 10. Um, it has become one of my favorite pans. It, be honest with you, it stays in the house most of the time. All right, it, it has turned in one of my daily users. All right, so let's take a look at this one real quick. It's got a really nice box. It seems to be very sturdy. It came in this box. You can see the, the all the shipping labels are right on it. So it's not a box in a box. And there that bad boy is. So let me bring the camera in. And you can look at it, the initial uh, finish and everything on it, uh, just like we got it. So, you look at the inside of a field company, that thing is smooth. It's still got the regular, you know, sandy finish up on the parts you don't cook on. That bottom. Here's my fingernail ragging across it. No sound. Okay. So let's pull it on out of here and then we'll compare this to a, a stock Lodge Black Lock pan of the same size. Comes with a nice card. Some care instructions there. That's going to be the same as every other. Um, some seasoning tips and some stuff like that. Hey, they didn't send me a they didn't send me a nice card like last time. But uh, let's go ahead and set this one out. Man, that thing is freaking big. I guess the first thing noteworthy is this is a number 12, not exactly a 12 inch pan. The uh, the new black locks now they're coming by inches. So so let's go ahead and and uh, see how big it actually is. Uh, the top of this is the inside rim to inside rim exactly 13 inches okay so the, uh, the depth looks like exactly two inches now the handle is uh, from the rim of the pan five and a half inches okay so that's a little little dimensions on it We've got the uh, field company molded into the bottom it, it does have the regular sand uh, finish on the bottom and on the handle and on the little it's got a little assistance part there just like my 10 inch so let's go uh, let's go get the 10 inch and I'll show you those side by side or the actually the number 10 So here is uh, my number 10, and it's uh, almost exact same design, the handle is exactly the same. Now you can see this one after a year's worth of use and re-seasoning, you know, and I haven't really done too many full seasonings on this, uh, maybe one or two over the past year. It's just from daily use, okay, and you can see how much color difference there is from new to uh, been used for a year okay so this and um you know I have had a few times with a little bit of trouble getting season to take but at, that's power for the course for smooth cast iron um, it is going to be a little harder sometimes to get season to take to it all right but that's been like I said I, that one stays in the house all the time now um, it's just my my one of my go-to's in the house so the number 12, like I said, 13 inches in diameter, 
Let's see if uh, any of our lids actually fit it. This is the uh, lodge. Mm -mm. Nope. Okay, here's a 12 inch glass lid. Mm, nope. So as your larger cast iron goes, I guess this is probably more comparable to the 15 inch lodge skillet. That's 12 and a half inches uh, in diameter at the bottom. This one is 12, 12 inches, give or take, about 12 inches. And the lodge uh, 15 is about 12 and a half. So just a little bit smaller than the big 15 inch lodge skillet. Okay, so this is their original line log skillet. So I'm going to show you this one. It's been seasoned a few times. Let me go in uh, show you the difference in the finish. So you can see this finish in here in the in the standard lodge. All right, you can you can hear that right uh, here. No, it's just oof. slick. Okay. Now, uh, so let's put this one back away and I'll bring down the brand new black lock and uh, we'll compare that. So here's our black lock pan. Uh, this one is a 12 inch, not a number 12, okay? 12 inch, all right? So let's go in and look at that interior finish on that guy. All right, uh, pretty rough. Uh, not terrible. These do come with uh, three three seasonings from the factory so it's a bit smoother than your uh, your baseline black lock right out of the box uh, this one's had a little bit of cook cooking on it been watching our series on uh, on these pans uh, not I'll leave your card right up here so that's the black lock finish back in to the field company finish all right so I think we've covered most everything except uh, handle length so like I said on the uh, on the field it's right at five and a half inches on the black lock uh, it's gonna be six inches so a little longer half inch longer on the handle uh, difference too this has got uh, this kind of holder on the opposite side your assistance handle and this has more of just a tab. So let's take a quick uh, glance at the quality of the casting and finishing. Uh, handle, nice and ground smooth. Edges, nice and ground smooth. Now you notice it, it has kind of a bronzy look. Um, the handle is finished very nicely. There's no sharp edges. I don't see any kind of molding flaws or anything like that on it okay there's no real imperfections at all it looks pretty much perfect okay these do have a small smoke ring at the bottom also see that alrighty so next thing we need to do is since this is right out of the factory I'm gonna take it down rinse it out with some hot water a little cast iron soap just to get any any uh, Thing that might be on it from the factory off, and then um, we'll uh, let you look uh, another look at it and get some oil on it. So we took this guy in the house, washed it out with a little bit of soap, and I'm hoping that that'll be the last time it ever sees soap. So I'm going to go in with about a tablespoon or so veggie oil. This is going to be the first time season. Uh, that sucker's gotten pretty hot on me so and I'm using uh, shop type towels. Okay, don't use paper towels for any year seasoning because those little lint from the those towels is going to get in your pan and in your oil. Looks like it, it's soaking it up quite a bit. That's why I like to get it when it's already warm. All right, so it likes to, when it's warm, it'll drink that in. So we're just doing the inside. And we're gonna let it come up. Got a little too much in there now, so we'll pour that off. But we're gonna let that come up to temp and get a little smoke on. And uh, 
Then we're gonna cook in it, just like this. So what we did with it, we just put a little, about two, three tablespoons of, of veggie oil in there, and we're just letting it smoke over there on the burner for a while. And I'm let, trying to get that bottom a consistent black color, burn that first uh, coat of oil right in there for you know good seasoning. And then, um, hey, we're gonna throw some breakfast items up. So don't go anywhere. So this was looking like after about 30 minutes on the burner here, and we just been periodically uh, wiping it again with our shop rag with uh, a little veggie oil on it. It's getting nice and silvery looking in the bottom. So I just flipped her over. The inside's looking pretty good, and now. You can see the bottom after that process is now looking at nice black silvery shine like that seasoning the, even the factory season is is baked on there very well now so that's the other uh, reason for trying to do this before you get uh, the first cook going you know that that factory season on a field that's to keep the thing from rust until it gets to your house you know back in the day when you used to buy these old Griswolds and stuff uh, they were came bare metal and uh, the reason uh, Lodge actually started um, seasoning theirs was to keep them from rusting before you bought it because people would a lot of people especially today wouldn't buy it it was already rusted when they got it so I guess the biggest thing I wanted to convey uh, during this review is that cast iron is a lifetime uh, lifetime item uh, if you take care of that that thing will last several lifetimes you can be handed that down to your kids uh, their kids kids just like a lot of these these old antiques back here from the early 1900s hell we still got one back here made in the 1700s so cast iron is a lifetime investment it's not a refrigerator or something like that it's gonna be dead in you know 10 10 15 years uh, cast iron is will last many many generations and the fuel company is really uh, you know catered back to the way they made them in the old days now I hear everybody over here on the channel all the time always complaining about the rough finish on most of the cast iron that's out there today you've seen this one's dead smooth just like the old ones uh, that uh, that big chicken fryer, big box Griswold right there, right now, we're somewhere around three hundred dollars. Okay, um, and it's a fantastic pan. Um, so I know a lot of you guys are probably asking, what's the price? Okay, uh, yeah, it's not cheap, but but I just pulled it up on my phone there, but. If you're looking for a lifetime investment pan, something you're going to have the rest of your life, uh, be able to hand it down to your kids, your kids to their grandkids, and so on and so on, um, this is the kind of pan that you can do that with. Of course, you can do that with almost all cast iron. Um, trick is here, or the difference is, not a trick, but the difference is here, is they spend a lot more time at the factory on this field company pan that's why the price is where it's at so I let that pan cool down for a little while and I just put a little medium low fire back under it go ahead and give it a little more oil Push it around in there a little bit. See how much blacker it is now. It's not got so much of a copper look in the bottom anymore. Just want to get a good coat of oil and even the, uh, the directions that come with the pan. Tell you to use plenty of oil to begin with. It's not going to, not only going to help it keeps from sticking but it's also going to help build that seasoning even more so we're going to do a little bit of breakfast even though it's dinner time and I know guys like me I can eat breakfast any time of the day we'll go ahead and start laying in some bacon and what we got in this pan 
in lots of real estate. I'm digging that part of it already. Just like bacon and cast iron. I wanted to remind you real quick about the new join button right down there. If you're on Android phones or on PC, that works just fine. Uh, if you're on iOS or Android tablet, it really doesn't work yet. I'll keep checking back with you uh, as soon as YouTube fix that, fixes that issue. The other thing I wanted to say real quick is if you... Um, are about to hit that dislike button because of the price of this pan please realize that likes and dislikes are about the quality and the information that you got here not about a recipe uh, I know some people hit dislike because we uh, put uh, mushrooms in the dish okay uh, the dislike button there it should be used according to YouTube is if you totally just hated the information or the presentation or the content of the video remember hey dislikes hurt our channel uh, if you don't like a particular ingredient or you don't like the price of the product we're showing you leave it in the comments but dislikes not where it should go Sliding around in there. I like to keep them sliding for a little while. Make sure that every side of them gets a little bit of seasoning or uh, grease on it, a little bit of bacon grease on them. It's gonna help you later. A little trick for you guys. You gonna do fried potatoes like this? Soak them in a little cold water about 15 to 30 minutes before you put them in the skillet. Then drain that water off before you bring them out and put them in the skillet. It will help tremendously uh, with the sticking issues. Killa is doing awesome. Let's go ahead and put our onions in now. I mean, yeah, I can't do no fried potatoes without onions. Now they're going to have some sugar in them. These are our Vidalia onions, the sweet onions, so we got more than, more than usual amount of sugar, so still trying to keep everything kind of nestled toward the middle. We got more real estate than we really need. Do something this small. And I'm keeping everything down on low because I don't have a lid that fits this pan. So I'm going to have to do it low to make sure your potatoes get cooked all the way through um, before they get too brown. Uh, let's give a little bit of our favorite season, Seminole Swamp season. Give them onions a little flip. Man, does that smell good. We crank that fire up a little bit. Right here at the end, those taters are done. Get that little bit of brownness on them. The nose are almost ready. Go ahead and pull them out. And you know, it's very rarely that I get a new piece of cast iron 
and it be that nice on the very first cook. I'm gonna turn that fire back down a little bit right now. Since we're taking food out, it's gonna get really hot really fast. But that has been so slick and everything's just rolled around in it. I'm gonna go ahead, do something I don't think I've ever done a brand new piece of cast iron. I'm gonna let it cool just a minute though. Still smoking a little bit. So what I did, I just cut the fire off. Still a lot of heat in that pan. And we're gonna go ahead. It's just been doing so awesome. Go ahead and drop us a couple eggs. I did bring my bacon back because it's been a little while since so we cut the them potatoes. Uh, got a little cold so just moved it out there around the edge of the pan and we will see if this thing can cook eggs on the first uh, go around here and man the Seminole Swamp fire and swamp on some eggs let's do them while they're still raw like that you will thank me later see the link below buy that directly from Seminole Swamp Season. They don't pay me a dime to uh, talk about their product here, but it has been a really, really good addition to our channel. All right, it's starting to look like it's ready to flip. We do need to get all the way under it first so we don't break our eggs. So I'm going in there with metal spatch, very low angle little bit of pressure toward the bottom of the pan until we can make it slide all right that's also working more oil under there all right so now it's sliding so we'll give it one more second now it's sliding so this is the real world cast iron all right i, I hear people comment on my channel all all the time so i just i just got a brand new stock lodge my eggs slide around in my pan for the very first time I used it. Um, I don't know where they're buying their lodge at, but that has never happened to me. All right. So we'll flip that bad boy over. And hopefully everything turns out good. I love this stuff that comes up from the, from the bacon, from the potatoes, and onions, and all that's on the back of your egg right here. It's not scorched. That's just that fawn coming and the seasoning. You know, we put seasoning in before. That's gonna give your eggs a lot more flavor. See how that comes out of there. Oh yeah, sliding around. Mm, 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 mm. Yep, okay, so everything else is done. I'm gonna show you how to make a quick camp toast. It's kinda like making a grilled cheese. Put a pat of butter in there. Swirl her around. Let her get brown. We turn the fire back up too. A little bit of fire for this. Ah, it's been a couple minutes. I'm gonna go check a look at it. Put another pat of butter down. Flop it on top of it. Move it all around the pan. This is even better if you got some bacon grease in there. Okay. So this is some um, some oat bread. Trying to eat a little healthier around here, but it works with any kind of bread. And if you're out of camp and you you know you're not going to have a toaster, uh, this you could do multiple pieces. And in this size skillet here, I could probably do four pieces at one time. All right? You just need that little you know little piece of butter for each one. So time for the plate. We got our over easy eggs on there. Let's come in with some of those fried potatoes. Man, awesome. And those onions are nice and caramelized and that's the trick to fried potatoes. All right, got some crispy bacon. That's what we started with. You get plenty of that over there. A little bit camp toast. There you go. That's a breakfast. 
make anybody happy, especially me right now, because I'm stark. So what was the overall performance of the pan for me? Uh, for a first cook, uh, it couldn't have been more better. Um, you know, there's absolutely nothing stuck to there. Even our eggs came off uh, with a little, a little coaxing. Okay, the, uh, the potatoes no sticking at all. Uh, it's just blowing me away, really. I think this is even better than the first one I got. Now their seasoning, their factory seasoning is two seasonings of grapeseed oil. And then we added our, we just add a little bit of veggie and burn it in. And man, awesome. All right guys, let's go and give them taters a taste. Mmm. That is pretty daggum awesome right there. And I hope you guys learn how to do camp toast on your cast iron. You can do that right out of camp, right on your Coleman stove, campfire, whatever. Just, you know, try not to keep it too hot. Mm. Yeah, buddy. So if you like what we're doing, please smash that like button right down there to subscribe to our channel. You can do it right over here for another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's going to be right over there for a whole playlist cast iron Dutch oven cooking. It's going to be right up there. We'll see you next time.